Welcome to GovCast, connecting with federal IT's top decision makers. My name is Katherine McPhail, and I am the host for today's episode. Today, we are joined by the Environmental Protection Agency's Chief Information Officer, Vaughn Noga. Vaughn has been with the EPA serving in leadership positions since 2008. Prior to joining the EPA, he worked as a government contractor and served in the United States Air Force. When Vaughn started as CIO in 2018, he set out six wildly important goals to guide his IT leadership. He breaks down each of those wigs for us today and explains how the goals that he set almost four years ago are now more important than ever. Vaughn, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Adam. Glad to be with you. So I know that you've been working in the IT industry for over 20 years. Can you tell us what initially brought you to the field? I would say, I hate to use the word dumb luck, maybe good fortune. I actually, when, when, I, uh, when I first started in federal service, I started in the Air Force. Um, and I was a security policeman for the better part of four years. And uh, coming out of the Air Force, I initially wanted to go to medical school. You know, and, and was was you know, getting geared up and prepared, and that's what I was studying. Um, and then I had an opportunity to to work in a health center, working within their IT department. And I, I got some great advice by from a doctor. And the doctor said, "Do you really want to go into medical, the medical profession? IT is where it is." And that kind of stuck with me. Um, and so from there, I really benefited from people taking a chance on me and my skills and, and really uh, allow me to develop my IT skills over the years. Um, and so that's really kind of how I matriculated through the, the IT career field. I, I you know, had, had a past in, in uh, big storage and big network and big compute, um, and then had an opportunity to kind of pivot away from the day-to-day technologies into more of the architecture and, and more of the management. And so that's kind of how I got to, to where I am today. And what inspired you? So you said first you were interested in health, and now you started at the Environmental Protection Agency in, in 2008, I believe. So what drew you to the EPA in particular? Yeah, I think, I think the mission drew me to the EPA and the, and the opportunity. I, I, I actually worked um, before, I, before I was hired by the EPA, I worked as a contractor to the EPA. So, so I, had a, I had some experience with the EPA and, and really working with the IT professionals uh, within the organization and, and and seeing the passion they had for for the mission and, and quite frankly the passion they had to to making sure that the employees had what they needed to do to to uh, to support the mission of the agency and I think you know certainly the 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 mission of the EPA is, is what's kept me here um, all these years uh, I've been here a number of years since 2008 and it, and there's always an opportunity to make a difference. And, and to improve um, the capabilities that our employees have to, to support the mission of the EPA. When you started as the CIO, you set six wildly important goals. Could you walk us through these goals one by one and tell us how they have driven your IT leadership? Sure. So, you know, working back from the beginning, I actually have been in this role what, the better part of three and a half years. And, and one of the things that, that I did when I first stepped into this role was work with the leadership team within, within the office to, to come up with these wildly important goal, goals and really look at the goals as, as kind of the strategic framework by which we are going to move the agency and, and our organization forward. And, and so, you know, as we developed these, we, we kept in mind that, that there was not a specific goal necessarily with, the, with each one. There were, there were overarching goals, and then we would identify initiatives that support those goals. So the, the first wildly important goal, and these are in no specific order, was optimize enter- enterprise IT services around the mission, and and that's a it's a long way of saying make sure that we are we are very purposeful on how we implement technologies and what we implement uh, within the agency to support the mission, to really look at how we maximize the the use of those technologies. So when you when you make an investment in in a in a, a software package or or a specific technology, make sure that we maximize the use of that technology. All right, and so um, this is how we approach um, when we look at, you know, all terms within a given space. You know, what is the opportunity? Where is the opportunity to take that technology or that or that software 
and utilize that across the agency. And it, it's not a static decision. It's something that we continually address as we as we go forward. Um, and this is certainly uh, an area that that has been looked at, you know, from the t- the start of the pandemic. You know, we we actually looked at well, how do you pivot? Um, where do you need to optimize? Where do you need to migrate? What do you need to expand to support the mission of, of the EPA and the employees? And, and so. Um, this is something you know that I work with the technologists um, and the architecture teams uh, to develop where are we going next, um, and those inform the decisions and the recommendations that we have uh, for the agency. I'm curious, real quick, at the moment, what would you say, you know, in regards to the EPA's plan for teleworking or returning to the office? What does optimizing the delivery of IT tech look like right now? I think it looks great. I, I think. Um, you know, we were able to pivot pretty quickly within the AC and, and, you know, allowing and supporting 14 plus thousand employees to go uh, to to near full time telework uh, for most folks, you know, and those are decisions that we made early on, like moving to laptops instead of desktops. Right. So so we had we already equipped the agency to be successful as we migrated. Um, we made decisions around deploying you know technologies like teams to support the the the, the distributed uh, connectivity that we needed and the connectedness that we needed to start looking at how do we manage remote resources you know pre uh, pre covid you know our our folks were on a trusted network and we could scan their devices now everyone's at their their remote working location but we still have a responsibility to manage those endpoints so how do you pivot and how do you do that and, and those are the things that we were able to uh, successfully pivot and, and, and implement pretty quickly the next wig one important goal is create a cybersecurity aware culture right and and it's one of those one of those things that we continually uh, strive to do um, cybersecurity is funny because uh, I think the the perception of cybersecurity uh, from from some folks is it's something done to them, not done for them. And so we really want to 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 create this culture where you know we're implementing these technologies and we're providing this education so they can be they can be more secure in how these use technologies um, uh, on a day to day basis. And a lot of this it comes down to not just the technologies we we deploy, but also the training we provide and the communications that we put out to the to the workforce. Uh, next wildly important goal is digitize records, and and this is an interesting one. I actually had an opportunity before I I, I started in this role to work as the director of facilities, uh, safety and health and security, something outside of IT, but it really opened my eyes up to. Uh, the amount of space is being used to to store paper records. So if you look across all of our facilities, there's dedicated space in in all of them to support paper files. We knew that we needed to head down this digitization um, path. And so this is one of the first things that we started um, as a team is looking at how can we uh, deploy this capability across the EPA. And, And this is, we have an entire team uh, within headquarters and with our regional partners looking at standing up digitization centers so we don't have multiple locations trying to provide digital services. We, we are going to really look at how do we deploy this capability in a couple of strategic locations to support the entire agency. And so this is, a, this is an expanding uh, space for us. Um, we, are, we are hopeful and we are we're going to be setting this up this year. Um, the team's been actively working the last couple of years of getting the centers stood up. Um, so this should be should be in production uh, before the end of the year. The next wildly important goal goes along with digitized records. It's go paperless. And and you know one of the things that that we were able to pivot to during the pandemic start of the pandemic was moving away from wet signatures on pieces of paper to digital signatures on a virtual piece of paper or PDF file. And, and we, we know going forward that that is not really the direction we want to go. So really go paperless is looking at how do we implement workflows, right? So, so not only how do we capture the document and the approval of, of a document, but how do we use the data that's associated with the document at some point in the future? And, and you know, even when you apply a digital signature to a PDF file, you still have to file that in a virtual file 
uh, file cabinet. And someone still needs to go back and actually look at those documents to glean information off of that. And we want to move away from that. So we've got a big effort going on right now to identify administrative processes that, that are ripe to convert to, to workflows. And, and we're actually piloting one right now. We've got a group um, going to uh, right now looking at a workflow. And then we'll use the lessons learned from uh, the development of that workflow to inform future workflows as we address other administrative um, documents. What is what's the workflow that they're looking at digitalizing? So the, the workflow they're looking at right now is is a telework request form. And so telework is is very, very big. It's something that we've been uh, actively working on within the agency. And we want to make sure that we've got a, a workflow uh, that's implemented that supports the request of telework. The next one is using data to drive informed decisions and and, and Really, it's I think it goes without saying that that we need to make sure that we're leveraging data to 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 make sure that we provide recommendations uh, so the senior leadership can make decisions. This is an area that we've been building upon you know, with the implementation of our geo platform many years ago to the implementation of our data management analytics platform to the use of visualization tools. This is an area that that you know we are committed to partnering with the the business owners within the agency uh, to make sure we match their business requirement with the 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 analytical tool set that our folks have to make sure we're able to meet their 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 mission needs. Um, what we don't need necessarily is everyone trying to be or going out and trying to figure out what analytical platform, what analytical tool they need. To, to, to solve their, their data problem, right? And one of the things that we're trying to do is bring your data and work with our folks and, and we'll help you visualize, if you will, if that's what needs to be done, visualize your data. And the last area is, is, is one that we call think like a customer, think like the customer. And, and really this is, this is uh, ensuring that we are communicating with the the vast number of EP employees, they're not IT professionals, right? So just like, just like any profession, you know, doctors have their own language, lawyers have their own language, and IT people seem to have their own jargony language as well. The goal here really is to make sure that we cut the jargon out, that we communicate effectively, and that we train effectively in language that everyone understands. Right? And so we've really built up a capability Within uh, within one of our offices within OMS, to really you know leverage those non IT folks, we pair them with the IT folks. Certainly, when we do mass um, um, mass mailers, when we do develop training, when we develop communications, we want to make sure it's done in a way that everyone understands. Thank you, thank you for sharing those goals. That's. I know it's very impressive. I think there's something about setting those resolutions at the start that really helps you figure out then what initiatives and strategies you're going to use. So no, it's interesting. Exciting. We actually re-looked at those. We looked at these. Um, and again, I say we look at these all the time. And, and after COVID, we looked at them again. And, and I think we came to, to the conclusion that they these, these WIGs are as important or more important now, today, than they were when we created them two years ago. I think they're, they, they were certainly aspirational two years ago, and they transitioned to be aspirational into imperatives, that we, we to be successful, to, to d deliver on what we need to do to support a hybrid workforce, we've got to have these capabilities in place. Absolutely. One thing I wanted to ask you about um, is that agencies often discuss the improved operational efficiencies and cost savings that modernization can introduce, but technology can also sometimes lessen environmental impacts. So I'm curious how the EPA thinks about implementing sustainable IT projects. I think it's at the forefront, you know, from the time that we make a decision about selecting a technology to the to the power saving settings that are set on everyone's computer to how we manage the printing environment uh, with agency. you know one of the things that, that we've done a long time ago was trying to reduce uh, the amount of printing um, because we're able to compute you know how much paper how much toner what the total costs were and, and certainly one of the things that we've seen that's what makes 
the go paperless and, and the digitization wig so important is if we're successful there, then we can actually reduce or eliminate uh, a lot of the printing requirements, right? And so, you know, we look at things like that. We looked at data center optimization initiatives um, with respect to uh, power consumption and the total number of data centers. And, and we've been very successful about reducing the number of, of data centers across the agency. Um, we've been very successful about imp implementing virtualization technologies across all locations. And, and we've been, I think in the last couple of years, we've been very successful at, at migrating a lot of our activities to, to cloud-based um, uh, technologies. And so we, we kind of keep that central to, uh, to, to how we implement. And we certainly want to, we want to be the leaders um, in sustainable IT. And, and so this is, this is core and central to, to all of our considerations. Are there any particular strategies that you would really like to see the rest of the government take into consideration? But I don't know about strategies. I think it comes down to, you know, maybe maybe the what folks need to do is look at the data, you know, and that's kind of what led us to looking at reducing printing, right? There's a, when you look at the, the costs associated with deploying all the printers, when you look at the costs associated with paper and consumables with, within that, it's really easy to take that data and, and have a discussion with senior leadership about about the imperative to change, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then you take that and you look at other strategies for how you're able to implement that. Um, and again, going back to go paperless, that's one of the strategies we want to, to, to leverage to, to allow us to reduce and continue to reduce the amount of printing going on the agency. And, and really that, that dovetails into how we collect information, right? So if you look at, you know, we collect what are called information uh, collection requests, ICRs. That's how we, we, we bring information from states and, and other folks, um, uh, regulated entities into the agency. Um, and our goal there is to move away from ba paper-based submissions into all digital submissions, right? And again, we're, we're trying to drive this into, into all considerations um, with respect to sustainable IT. So uh, pretty recently, the Biden administration released a presidential management agenda vision. I'm curious if that document has how that may have influenced EPA and your IT priorities and other things that you're thinking about. Yeah, the PMA certainly influences what we do here at the agency. I mean, I looked at I looked at that, and and you know, one of the one of the things that resonated the most with me, um, and certainly what we're doing, is the customer experience, right? And it's it's not only building the positive customer experience for how we engage um, the public, but it's also how we build those positive customer experiences within the organization, right? And and so so that resonated, you know, we that we need to again, it resonated and affirmed what we're doing with with think like the customer, which is the wildly important goal. And, and so I, I think it affirmed um, the WIG and it affirmed some of the, the work that we're doing within this space. We actually, within, within um, OMS, my group, we've got um, you know, a customer experience team that we're growing. And, and we're growing that initially looking at how we deliver our services within IT. But the goal is to actually expand upon that and look at how we're how we're enabling leveraging customer experience across multiple fronts. I think um, you mentioned early in the interview that one of the things that drew you to the EPA was the mission, but also how you feel like the EPA takes care of its employees. Um, so I'm curious what you would say your leadership style is and sort of how you try to foster a positive working environment. Hmm. So I would say my leadership style is, is participatory. I like to engage at all levels. I, I would say one of the things that, that we did even before um, before COVID were, you know, CIO breakfasts and CIO lunches. I think we expanded that, and and you know, engaging with new employees. Uh, one of the things that that we've been very successful at is not just engaging employees in IT in my organization, but you know, OMS are are the the organization. We also manage grants and contracts and facilities and, and really creating the opportunity for folks across the various offices to connect with each other. And I think that's what we've seen and that's what we're trying to, to continue 
as we move into some sort of hybrid environment going forward. And then uh, my last question for you is, what are you the most excited for in 2022? Wow. I, I, I guess I'm most excited ab about the, hopefully the, the near-term opportunity of, of, of you know, re-engaging with folks, in, you know, more of a, a personal, I mean, hopefully at some point we'll be able to transition back into uh, some days in the office. I think there is, you know, I think we've been very successful in a, in a, teleworking environment, leveraging the tools we have. But I, I would say that, you know, some of the interpersonal, the, the, the hallway discussions, some of the, some of the spot, spontaneous um, dialogue that happens is missing. And I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm also, you know, excited about a lot of things that we're doing within the organization to expand our capabilities and, and what we're able to do with the, the future of the workforce. And I think there's a huge opportunity there, and I think we're we're kind of a we're kind of the tip of the spear on from the technology side to help the the agency pivot and and, and embrace those new tools, new technologies to support the work. Great, thank you. GovCast, along with CyberCast and HealthCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at gcio.com. 